this is lecture 28 Uh, so up until now we have been discussing various flavors of amplifiers right we also we discussed various flavors of control sources and in the last couple of lectures we also saw that the same amplifiers that uh, I mean the same set of circuits that we were designing with an NMOS transistor can also be designed with a with a PMOS transistor right and I'm sure you you, you uh, took the opportunity uh, and went through the went through the this week's assignments right where we saw uh, saw the same configurations of amplifiers using NP MOSs which were earlier done with N MOSs right okay uh, so far so good so in this lecture from uh, in this lecture I would like to draw an attention to one uh, an important non-ideality of all the amplifiers that we have been dealing with till now okay uh, so this has kind of crept in because we didn't address it right up front. So moment I tell you what the what the non-ideality is, it will immediately hit you as to why why this is a problem. So what is in our common source amplifier? What is the gain? So AV in a CSM is minus GM times RL, right? And if it's loaded with an active resistor. Right, so then it's minus GM times RDS. Okay, now now the issue is GM is dependent on mobility variation, threshold voltage variation, and one might say that if we bias a transistor using constant current source, its a GM is not dependent on on uh, on threshold voltage variation. Granted, but still it's dependent on mobility variation, right? Right. Similarly, RDS is also dependent on lambda, which is again a function of the device, which might change based on the based on the structure of the device, right? Uh, based on ambient conditions also. Uh, and lambda is also proportional to IDS. Again, if if it, if it's uh, biased with constant IDS, lambda is less likely to change. But uh, but the mobility of the transistor will change, right? Mobility of the transistors will change if we change the uh, change the temperature so what is the issue then the issue is this amplification factor right is not constant right and what is the implication the implication is a pra very practical implication is you can consider your music system right when you when you slide the volume bar of your music system to some uh, uh, maybe uh, to some level you expect the the sound that uh, the volume of the sound that is coming out to be of certain value certain level right uh, you don't expect that volume to go up and down based on the temperature outside right which essentially is another way of saying is that you want a constant gain regardless of the ambient conditions around the amplifier so so even though your mm, uh, even though our transistor here has a gain uh, a common source amplifier can give us a gain right but this gain is not not very constant right so this is this gain is dependent on ambient variations right okay this is often called this is often referred to as process voltage and temperature variations right so this is called process voltage temp or PVT variations so so the gain of our of our uh, of our amplifier is dependent on PVT variations why P P is process by process I mean uh, so you make your transistor in batches right you make your transistor in batches of wafers so it's quite possible that one batch of wafer has a different mobility than the next batch right so if if your design if your amplification factor is dependent on mobility then obviously your uh, uh, your trans your amplifier is is susceptible to process variation what is temperature temperature is uh, quite evident right mobility again depends on temperature so yeah uh, the gain is dependent on mobility uh, what about voltage this is not very obvious right away 
this essentially uh, implies that if the quiescent vol voltage if the if the voltage if the supply voltage changes right or even if the quiescent voltage changes is your amplifier gain likely to change right as we as we saw in our case it, it is likely to change right uh, if for example the ids changes right instead of voltage you can think of current right if the current changes gm will change if G gm changes then then uh, you'll have uh, you will you, have variations of gain right so that's a problem uh, what is the other problem the other problem is a common source amplifier this is problem number one right this is problem number one what is the other problem common source amplifier is dependent on the the gain of the common source amplifier so this is ideally rds let me write it in this way mod of this is gm rds parallel rl so the gain of the common source amplifier is dependent on on rl right gain dependent on rl so let me put a cross points before this because these are all negative uh, negative attributes okay so if gain depends on rl which means that if i change rl the gain changes and we have talked about this why is uh, why does gain depend on rl because a common source amplifier that is very core is a voltage control current source okay but what is a good thing about a common source amplifier the good thing is it can give high gain or even decent gain you can get decent gain right okay what about a common drain amplifier what about a common drain amplifier the common drain amplifier that we saw could have was giving us a gain of approximately one under the condition of gm times r to be much greater than one right so under the if gm rl is much much greater than one right so what are the positive attributes the positive attribute is since as long as we can ensure gm rl is much greater than one so this is pvt invariant right what is the other positive attribute the gain is independent of gain is independent of rl right as long as you satisfy the inequality and what is the negative attribute of this obviously the big negative attribute is you don't get gain right gain is less than equal to one right in fact gain is always less than one you cannot get more more, more gain than one right so this becomes a problem okay so so what we would like to do next is to build is to try and build an amplifier right so what we would like to do next is goal we modify our goal and say that we would like to build an amplifier that is pvt invariant can drive or let me say rl invariant and what is the last thing gains gain greater than one right so this is this is our new goal using the structures that we have already already seen okay so let's and let's target the first first guy let's target this So we like to build an amplifier whose gain is PVT invariant. So forget about amplifier for the time being. Can you think of something in an IC on an integrated circuit that is that doesn't change with temperature variations, right? So what a resistance value of a resistance does it change with temperature? Yes, it does. If we think of uh, Transconductance, does it change with temperature? Yes, it does. 
conductance does it change with temperature yes it does so it looks like apparently everything in, a, uh, in an integrated circuit changes with temperature right however if i take a ratio of two uh, two components right let's say i take the ratio of two resistors right so let's take the ratio of two resistors let's say r1 uh, let's say i take a voltage divider okay so let's say this voltage is v and this is r this is r what is this value this is always p by 2 correct so let's say now temperature changes what's going to happen this r is going to change and go to r plus delta r the, but the bottom r is also going to change because in an integrated circuits all the r all the resistances are placed in their neighborhood right so if the wafer hits up everything hits up so the this guard is also going to change by the same amount because they are made out of the same material and they are sitting next to each other which means the ratio is is invariant of pvt right so what is the first observation ratios of identical structures or ratios of identical electrical elements are PVT invariant. Okay. However, when you take a ratio, you will always get something which is less than 1. Right? If you take a resistor divider, you cannot get a voltage of greater than V. You will always get a voltage less than V. Right? So, this is this is this is a positive attribute. This guy is a positive attribute, and the negative attribute is ratio is always less than 1. Right? However, we saw a different problem with a common source amplifier. In a common source amplifier, what did we see? We saw that the gain is more than one, but the gain is gain is PVT dependent, right? So if we stop and think that looks like I have two different, I have two structures which have different problems. One structure is a common source amplifier where we can get high gain, but the gain is PVT in PVT variant, right? Another case, I have a ratio of resistances where we get low gain right gain less than one but uh, but uh, but the ratio is pvt invariant so the question is can i marry these two together can i marry these two properties and get get a gain of more than one right while making the gain pvt invariant right so that is what we will explore next Okay, so in order to explore the same thing, we, we would resort to negative feedback and I will take you back to few few lectures back where we introduce negative feedback while trying to design a, uh, a current controlled voltage source, right? So a quick refresher, what is negative feedback? In negative feedback, what is the principle? The principle is observe the output compare with expected output right drive the output with the knowledge of the difference between observed output or actual output and expected output, right? So this is step one, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, okay, okay. So 
So in order to build an amplifier, what is step one? We have to uh, first observe the output and compare with the ex expected output, right? What is expected output? Okay. So what is the expected output in an amplifier? What is the expected output? So we need to build an amplifier of V naught equal to let's say K times V i where K is greater than 1. Correct? So what is the expected output? Is equal to K times V i. Okay? What is the actual output or observed output? It is V naught. Right? So which means that I have some output V naught and I have some expected output k times v naught or k times vi right i have some expected output k times vi so I, everything is in some voltage node because we are dealing with voltage quantities so what is the difference between the expected output and the actual output the difference is i call it ve right let's say it's called we call it error voltage so ve is v naught minus k times vi right so based on this difference we have to take some action what action should we take based on this difference we should take an action such that the error voltage goes to zero right so what action should we take we should take an action such that build a circuit that drives the error voltage VE to 0, right. So essentially what we need to do, we need to compare, we need to compare V0 with KVI, right. We need to generate VE, compare, by generating VE means I am comparing V0 with KVI, then I am generating uh, the difference and I am doing something to drive the difference to 0. Right. So now do you see a problem in this formulation? What I am saying is to get VE, I need V0, which obviously I have because V0 is some output node, but we also need K times VI. So if we already had K times VI, then why would we bother doing, doing all these things? Right. The whole purpose is to generate k times vi. Now, if I require k times vi to find out ve, then looks like there is no point in pursuing this, uh, this line, this approach, right? You, you are right, but note that what is the goal? The goal is to drive this to 0. This is the goal, right? This is the goal. If we can drive this to 0, then v0 will be actually be equal to kvi, but we do not have kvi. But can we have, can we just modify this equation and and say that and say that we'll we'll define VE so define VE as V naught over K minus VI and then drive this to zero where K is more than one is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Why? Because k is more than 1 and I can generate v0 over k by using a simple resistive divider. Right? Okay. Right? Great. So, let us do that. So, block, block diagrammatically what is going to happen? So, now what is, what is the, uh, 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 what is the out, we have an output v0 and we have to now compare it with compare V0 over K with VI, right? So, how do I get V0 over K from VI? I put a resistor divider, right? Okay. So, value of let us say K minus 1 R and R, right? So, the voltage here will be V0 over K.
right so this voltage here is p naught over k and i have an input vi i need to compare vi with v naught over k right block diagrammatically what is comparison it is a nothing but taking a difference so let's say i take a difference i take a difference between v naught and v uh, between vi and v naught over k then this becomes ve correct so we have to take some action on ve and drive it and 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 put some block so that some act we, once we take some action on ve and drive v naught it will drive v naught towards towards our desired output right so that's a whole feedback system right this is the whole feedback system that we need to uh, uh, that we need to build okay okay fine so that is as far as uh, that is as far as the block diagrammatic representation is concerned but we have left out some critical pieces here and the critical piece that we have left out is we don't know what is the transfer function of this block right so so in a feedback system we we often call this g right so uh, let let me call this a for the time being right a beta right so let me call this a for the time being we don't know what a is right okay but before we proceed let's see whether whether this loop actually makes sense or not right what do i mean by that so what i am essentially trying to get to here is how do i know that this loop is indeed a negative feedback so what is the property of negative feedback one of the properties of negative feedback is is the output whatever happens the output will be will be stable right so output v not will be k times vi correct other way of stating the same thing is if there is some excitation in this loop anywhere the output will still remain k times vi right okay so if the output is supposed to be steady steady in the presence of any excitation then is there a way to figure out by looking at the loop that whether the the sense of the loop is in the right direction or not there indeed is because we can inject some hypothetical injection anywhere in the loop and see whether the action of the loop is to suppress the injection or increase the injection right so let me let me uh, let me illustrate that with an example so let's say you have set this loop in uh, in in the way we have i have shown here and let's say we inject we somehow we inject an input we yank this voltage up what happens if i yank this voltage up what happens to ve note that I, it goes through a negative sign so this voltage goes down right if a is positive what is happening to v not v not goes down so what is happening to v not over k v not over k also goes down right which means that the loop is trying to correct any excitation that i am trying to inject anywhere you can do that you can do that anywhere in the loop right let's say i i inject i yank this voltage up this voltage is going to go up this voltage is going to go down since uh, sorry this voltage is also going to go up since we have a negative sign now so this voltage is going to go down and and the loop is trying to suppress the initial excitation that that we, that we gave now whether the loop will be able to sufficiently suppress the excitation or not is a matter of detail that we will have to look look into but at least the sense of the loop is sense of the loop is in the direction to correct itself okay so what happens let's say for example i have a gain of minus a if the gain is negative so let's play this game again so let's let's inject an excitation here right if i inject an excitation there this voltage goes down what happens to v not this voltage goes up because i have a negative a negative gain which means this voltage goes up right see this is a positive feedback so i have injected an excitation and when you come around the loop it it reinforces the it has a tendency to reinforce that excitation right 
which essentially means that this is a positive feedback this is not a negative feedback loop okay so how do i how should i how should i change the sense of the loop there are two ways to change it one of course is to change the sign of a and the other is to say i will change the sign of the summer right if i change the sign of the summer then what happens let's say i inject I inject, uh, I, I make a hypothetical injection, this goes up, this goes down, this goes down, right. So, sense of the loop seems to be, seems to be fine now, okay. So, let us, uh, so let us go back to our original loop. So, now if we are satisfied that this loop is in, this loop indeed is in negative feedback, the next thing is to find out what is the, what is the expected value of a which will give us the negative feedback right i mean which will give us what we want it's a negative feedback with the expected value of a for which v naught will be equal to k times vi right other way of saying the same thing is that what is the expected value of a for which ve will tend to zero because ultimately we would want the ve to tend to zero right so ultimately we would want this ve to 10 to 0. If the loop is operating properly, if we have designed it properly, then V is to 10 to 0 and that is what we, we, we will see next. Okay. So, let us see. So, it is a simple loop and let us uh, let us find out what is V naught. V naught is equal to A times V e. What is V e? V e is V i minus V naught over k correct so v naught 1 plus a over k is equal to a times vi which means v naught is a times vi by 1 plus a over k and if i bring k uh, if i multiply everything with k over a for example so this becomes v naught is k times v i by 1 plus k over k. Correct? So, can you now what, what does this tell you? This is essentially telling us that if we set a to be infinity, right? If we have an infinite gain amplifier, if v naught limiting value of v naught when a tends to infinity is k times v i. Right? So, this is what uh, this expression is telling us and if this is achieved what will be ve so limiting value of ve when a tends to infinity is what is is zero correct so essentially if we tend if we are able to tend a to infinity right ve will tend to zero right so ve will tend to 0 and if V e tends to 0 what happens to this node voltage this node voltage tends to V i if this node voltage tends to V i V naught over k tends to V i then V naught tends to k times V i right so this is a typical way of analyzing a negative feedback loop we never analyze a negative feedback loop through the forward path we always analyze a negative feedback loop to the reverse path and what is the starting starting place the starting place is is the fact that if the loop works properly which means that we have a very high gain amplifier in this case a tends to infinity if we if the if it's a negative feedback and we have a very high gain amplifier then the job of the loop will be to suppress the input of the amplifier and it will go close to zero right so negative feedback negative feedback with high gain amp pushes the input of the amp to zero right right so since this pushes the input of the amp to zero which essentially means that these two voltages v i and this voltage right uh, v i v naught over k the input voltages of 
the summer they track each other in other words they are virtually shorted right these two nodes become virtually shorted right so i am sure you have seen this concept in 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 uh, different domains and V not over k is v i. So if these two nodes are virtually shorted, what happens to v e? So v e goes to ground, goes to zero. So this is not an actual ground, but this is a virtual ground, right? So v e becomes a virtual short if a tends to infinity. Okay. Okay, so now our job will be, our job will be to replace this summer and this A with real transistors, right? Before we move on, can you tell me what happens if A changes? Let's say I start from, let's say A is finite, assume in, if you cannot get infinite gain, you have to settle for something, right? So, if A is finite, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to V0? So, V0 we saw was A times Vi by 1 plus A by A. So, this is what is the expected value? What is ideally what is the expected value? So, V naught ideal is A times V i. So, now we have an error, right? What is the error? By error, I do not mean V e, I mean the error between the expected and the actual output, right? So, error in V naught is A times V i minus K times V i by 1 plus K over A, which is equal to a times v i 1 plus k over a minus 1 by 1 plus k over a right so what is error percentage you divide by the expected uh, you divide the error divide with the expected value that is k times v i so the error percentage becomes k over a by 1 plus 1 plus k over right so if a is if a is much greater than unity then or a is much greater than k this becomes approximately equal to k by a so if a over k is much greater than 1 right so let's say you shoot for a to be equal to 1000 right what and k to be equal to let's say 2 you want a gain of 2 you build an amplifier of uh, of gain 1000 or let's say 100 you build an amplifier of gain 100 how much will be your error it will be 2 percent right and let's say because of ambient variation a changes from 100 to let's say 200 how much will be your error the error will be 1 percent right so still even if you have gain is varying if the, even if the gain of your amplifier is varying by 2x right even if the gain of the amplifier is varying by 2x your output is accurate to 98% right your error is so essentially what is uh, what is the implication the implication is the error uh, steady state error or the error percentage is uh, times 100 right i forgot about the times 100 the error is inversely proportional to the gain okay since the error note that the output is not proportional to the to the gain correct in a open in a common source amplifier right in an open loop common source amplifier 
the output is proportional to the gain correct so so in this in this particular case error is proportion inversely proportional to gain not the output right so output is not proportional to gain correct in open loop common source amp output is proportional to gain output is proportional to gain so if gain changes by certain factor the output also changes by certain factor in a negative feedback loop if the gain changes by the certain factor the error percentage changes by certain factor not the output right output is almost steady so for example in this case in a common source amplifier let's say if the gain goes from 100 to 200 or if gain drops from 200 to 100 your output can or if if, uh, if the gain drops from let's say 6 to 3 your output can change by a factor of 100% right or like 50% but in case of if in case of a feedback amplifier if if the out if the gain changes by let's say from 200 to 100 your output only changes by 1% right so that's the critical difference right Right. All right. So that that essentially ensures that a negative feedback way of building an amplifier, right? A negative feedback way of building an amplifier is gives you a PVT invariant uh, way of make, uh, designing a amplifier. Okay. Okay. So what about what about if I put if I put a, what if I put a load resistance RL? What's going to happen? So let me sketch the circuit somewhere again and then we can talk about it. So So what if I put a re resistance RL, is the gain dependent on RL, I mean everything is dependent but is the gain proportional to RL, does it change drastically if I change RL, so let us see. So essentially what we are trying to figure out is that is this a voltage controlled voltage source or a voltage controlled current source, a, a common source amplifier was a voltage controlled current source, so is this guy a voltage controlled current source or a voltage source. So what is the test, the test is to check output impedance, right. Let us check the output impedance. To check output impedance, what should we do? We should desensitize the input. So I rounded the input. Okay. Uh, I do not need this RL. All I need is a test voltage. Right. And I need to figure out what is I test. Okay. Okay. So let us see. So if I put a test voltage here, what is this voltage? This voltage is V test over A. What is this voltage? The other terminal is grounded. So this voltage is minus V test over K, right? So now we have a problem because the way we have sketched this amplifier is it is an ideal amplifier, it is an ideal A. Moment we put a block diagram of ideal A, which means it is a voltage control voltage source. So, which means this can be any voltage regardless of what am I driving, what I am driving with. But note that in our case, we have, uh, we are driving the output with a voltage source, which means there is a conflict, right. In this block diagram itself, there is a conflict. But we need not worry too much because we know that this A, this A is some sort of a common source amplifier. Because that is what we have, that is the only high gain, trans, high gain stage that we have, right. All the other stages that we have seen have low gain. So we know that this is a common source amplifier, which means that it is a voltage control current source, right. So let us assume this is a voltage control current source. So let me, so 
so let's say this is V E. So I have a voltage because the way I have sketched. Uh, let me let me draw this. Then we will talk about the because part. Okay, so this is G M times V E. Note that I have put the arrow up. Uh, yeah, in the direction opposite to that of a common source amplifier because in this case we assume the gain has to be positive in a common source amplifier the gain has, is negative you will see the implication of that uh, shortly right uh, uh, either in this lecture or in the lecture after this but because from the block diagrammatic perspective we know uh, we want it to be if ve increases we want the output to increase which means i have to push current out right so that's all we are doing okay so if this is the case what is the uh, what is the current that i am drawing in the current that i am, that I am drawing in is gm times v test over k correct okay okay so what is i test i test is gm times v test over k plus v test by AR, right? So, what is V test over I test is 1 over GM by K plus 1 by AR, right? So, as long as, as long as we can set this to be much less than RL, right? If we set this is R out essentially, right? So this is R out. So R out is becomes one by. Or let me say let me put the K on top instead of carrying it all the time. Let me call this G, GM plus G, right? So if this is much much greater than RL, sorry, much much lesser than RL. If this is much much lesser than RL, then this is a voltage controlled voltage source. So in other words, in other words, all we have to ensure is that GM times RL plus G times RL should be much much greater than or much much greater than K or this should be much much greater than R. So is it in our control? Can we do this? Yes, we can do this because GM is in our control. K is a kind of in our control because it's the gain that we are trying to set. Even if K is not in our control, GM is in our control, G is in our control. So if we get certain values of RL, we can make GM times RL by K plus G plus RL by K to be much greater than 1. If we do that, this becomes a voltage controlled voltage source, which means now we have a voltage controlled voltage source with a gain of more than unity, which can drive, which can drive any load under certain condition and also whose amplification factor is independent of process voltage temperature variation, right? Okay. 